message is going to be on, uh, the title of it is Stress Versus Rest. So it's kind of funny that you don't pray about anxiety, leaving your anxiety at the door. So hopefully we can kind of do that today. So um, you got the title of Stress Versus Rest, just in case you didn't hear me. But we're going to start out in um, Psalms chapter 55, verse 22. And it says, cast your cares on the Lord and he will and he will never let the righteous be shaken. Let's open a prayer. Dear God, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for these wonderful people here tonight. I can't tell you how to even put it in words to explain how these people mean to me. I'm so thankful to have a church like this, have a community like this, just to come together and just dive deeper into your word. I just want you to bless tonight. Hopefully something sticks to these people because it's completely through you, Jesus. I want you to use me tonight, and I pray that. Can we all say Amen. 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 All right, guys. So let me tell you this. I'm going to start out with the intro story. Because I got to. Um, yeah. So this is actually not my story. This is my dad's story. So I'm taking credit for him. But he was telling me this story. It was a couple weeks ago. And I don't, he really didn't take it like I did. But so he, he works at an industrial plant. It's called Alloy Resources. It's just here in Abigail. They build a lot of alloys and metals. So he's a plant manager there. And he had an employee one day. You can kind of tell he was like struggling the boy he did. He was like messing up. His equipment was messing up all day. He was really behind. You could tell he was just stressed. Like, I don't, he didn't know what was happening. Maybe something at home. Anxiety was just taking over his life. And he was just stumbling and falling. And towards the end of the day, this employee had to stay late because he got behind on his work. And everyone like, could tell that he was just having a struggleful day. And when he went to leave, um, his truck would not start, my dad said. And that's just something. But um, dad noticed that. Dad was like, hey, I'm just going to get this dude right home, you know? Dad's, just, dad's one of the generous, most generous guys I've ever met. He'll literally get a shirt off his back and not make a loss about it kind of guy. So he takes this guy home. You can tell on the way, way home that my dad was saying that this dude was just distraught. I mean, he could not think straight, didn't want to have a conversation. This is, and dad knew this guy for almost a year now because he's been working for him. He said this guy was a very happy, upbeat guy. So he was like, what is up with this dude? He was really worried. But anyway, they get home, they get to this guy's house, and the guy was like, hey, sir, um, you remember my family? You want to come in and just make my family real quick? Dad was like, sure, okay. I reached for his gun and his glove box kind of thing. He's like, how crazy this dude is. But um, so they walk up, and as they're walking into the door, the dad noticed, dad really didn't notice it until the guy reached for it, but it was a potted plant. And so the guy, before he gets in the door, reaches the potted plant and like, brushes one of the um, leaf petals on the potted plant. And as soon as he done that, he opened the door, and the guy's whole emotions went 360. He was happy, he was joyful. His two kids ran up, picked him up, hugged him, said, I love my family so much kind of thing, like greeted his wife, like there was nothing happening wrong. Like, this dude, struggling for money, you can tell, he's having to work a hard way to job, and his truck is tore up, and he doesn't have a doesn't care. He's happy he's home. And dad was like, okay. My dad's just trying to figure this dude out. He has no clue what's going on. Dad's just on edge right now. So he meets the family. He's like, get to know him a little bit. And then dad's like, all right, I gotta go. So he wants to get home with his family. And um, the guy walks him back out. And dad was going to sketch him about that plant. He said, something's up with that plant. What's that plant got? You know? <laughs> and dad's like, I want what this guy's got, basically. So um, he was awkwardly kind of asked the dude. He was like, so, what's up with that plant or something? Because I know you're really stressed out today, and then you touch this plant, and you're happy. Low key, I think that was kind of, I think it was American wine. This dude is like, getting some kind of reaper off this plant. <laughs> but, um, that wasn't the case. That was all that, I mean, the man, the employee was like, oh, dude, yeah, that's my, uh, that's my worry. That's my worry plant. And I was like, okay, what's that? He's like, well, I don't like to carry my worries from work into my home because I feel like it affects my family um, in a negative state. So I touch one of the petals and I draw my worries into the soil. And he said, I'll leave them there and then the next one, I'll pick my worries back up and take myself to work. And he said, the funny thing was, as the boy smiled, he says, every morning there's fewer worries that I left that night before. And my dad didn't realize it, and but I realized what, my, uh, what that boy was saying. That plant is Jesus. That is a representation of Jesus. Give your words to Jesus, and he'll take them away. 
Maybe not all, maybe not all at once, because there's trials that we have to go through. But he'll take them away, sure. You just have to give your stress up to Jesus. And so, um, sorry, I went over. So this brings me right here. Um, so the symbolism is like crazy in the Bible. You know, there's always symbolism, um, like the apple in the Garden of Eden. That's symbolism. Um, when Jesus refers to us as um, trees and we bear fruit, so a good tree bears good fruit and a bad tree bears um, bad fruit. This one right here really sticks out to me. It's Jeremiah um, chapter 17, verse 8. If you'll bring it up from the tray. Do we have it? <laughs> We're doing so okay. I can read out my paper. All right. They will be like a tree planted by the water. That sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear what heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought. It never bears to bear, or to bear fruit. So this right here symbolizes the tree is us, okay? The stream is Jesus, and our roots is the grow towards um, Jesus right here. So Jesus right here, he's, you got to soak up Jesus. you got to dive in his word live throughout his work because you have to understand about stress and worry why be stressful because the battle's already won. Jesus has already fought the battle and he's already won. So right here it also says about the heat. So the heat could be work with desires, work with stress. When it comes and attacks you at the weakest, don't worry. Soak into Jesus and he will bear the burden for you. And to bear the fruit is always, if you dive into Jesus, you worship Spend time with the Lord. Good fruit you will produce good fruit. There will be no bad fruit. So, if you might go to the third slide, please, right here. I have a question kind of thing. It says, if we believe that God is in control, then why do we sometimes feel anxious about the future? To me, this is so important to think about this right here because we're going to be going into a story and we're going to talk about a king. And it's a king of Babylon. Has a huge, Babylon is such a huge empire in this time. And he was losing <laughs> sleep every night over this dream. And uh, he was like, he was losing control. He was like waking up. He's like, dude, what is up? What is up, dude? I cannot sleep. And like, if you ever like had a dream and you wake up next, like you wake up and you're like, what did I just dream about? You know? Like, well, you can't think what your dream is, but you know it's scary. Obviously, because you're like, the fetal position on me, sweating. And crying. <laughs> That's what you but anyway, um, I want to talk about the story. So if you'll bring up the verse right here, it's going to be Daniel chapter 2, and I'm going to read um, verse 1 through 3. In the second year of his reign, and I can't, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce these words. It's Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, thank you. words in here. I believe that so. No one, I'm okay with it. But he had dreams. His mind was troubled and he could not sleep. So the king summoned magicians, the chanter, sorcerers, astrologers. You gotta understand the most wisest people he could think of. He was like, these people who he's relied on in the past, because these people would always come up and like interpret dreams and stuff for several kings. So to tell him what he dreamed, and when they came in and stood before the king, he said to them, I've had a dream that troubles me, and I want to know what it means. <coughs> So the king right here, he is just so troubled by the strain. He can't think straight. He's, his own um, resolution of this is like, let me bring in these wise people. They've helped me before. But he's kind of like, he's on edge because he can't remember the dream. So this is kind of new to these wise men that he's had. He said, you got to tell me what I dreamed about. you got to tell me what it means. Okay, bring up the next slide, please. What do you sleep over? Think right now. What... When you go to bed at night and you wake up from a terrible dream, think about that horrible thought that you dream about that what makes you want to sleep. All right, next slide, please. So this is um, verse 4. And um, it's, the astrologers answer the king. May the king live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will interpret it. The king replied to the astrologers, This is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me what my dream is and interpret it, I will have you cut up in tiny pieces and your house will be burned in piles of rubble. Sorry, but if you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive many gifts and rewards with great honor. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. 
So we can use this slot dish right here. You tell me the drink, I want to know what it means, and if you do that, you're going to be high rolling in money, okay? You're going to be living a good life with me. But if you can't, kiss your wife goodbye, because you're gone, okay? <laughs> I'm being real with you right now. This, this king was on edge. He was so stressed out about this drink. He knew this was a different drink. He knew that it had a purpose, but he didn't know what it was, and he was scared to death. Do we ever get into a moment in our life where we're just scared to death and we don't know what to do? He's on his last resort. This is what it means really like. He is so scared that he's literally saying, I'm going to kill you if you don't help me. But if you do help me, I'll give you anything you want. I got to check that. I'm sorry. So this goes on and um, the I'm trying to think of how to explain it, but the wise ones really like we can't do this, so I, and the next verse is it's really, they're like, we can't do this, and this kind of really makes some mad, so I don't have this verse up here, but I'm just going to read it real quick, and it's Daniel chapter um, 2, verses 10 through 11, the astrologers answered the king, there is no one on the earth who can do what the king's asked. No king, however great almighty, has ever asked this of any magician or enchanter. What king, what the king asks is too difficult. No one can reveal it except the king except the gods, and they do not live among us. What really stands out to me right here is that the future can't be determined by men. Only gods can. Now, this time, they was kind of like pagan relationships, pagan religion, and they was thinking of many gods. But what they didn't know is that there's only one sovereign of God that can do this. And so the future can't be determined by men. I wanted you to kind of think of it today's time right here. So, um, say Donald Trump. He calls up smartest people in the world, and he's like, I got to have this rough dream. You need to tell me what I dream. You need to tell me how you interpret it. Tell me what it means. So he's got Bill Gates in there. Bill Gates is like, okay, I got all the resources there. You got to think. Back then, they didn't have Google. We got Google now. <laughs> but do you think Google could tell, don't, tell them what Donald Trump dream? No. Still in today's time, with all the resources we have, Men still cannot do what God can do. And lastly, I want to say that all true wisdom is God's wisdom. So now, um, if you bring up the next slide, it's going to be to verses 14 through 19. When Ariok, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to put the death to the wise men of Babylonia, Daniel spoke up to him with wisdom and tact. So right here, the king was like, okay, I'm really mad. And if y'all will not give me my answers, I'm going to kill all the wise men in the land. That's all of them. So Daniel, as being one of the wise men that was kind of talked about in the chapter before, um, so they had to go out and kill Daniel and his three friends that were about to come on. And Daniel kind of like, when, they, when he approaches and finds out this news, he comes to the kingsmen um, with grace. He's like, well, I understand that. that that's what he's got to do. I understand that. I can really understand it. I respect that he's going to kill me. I get that. But he asked the king's officer, why did the, why did the king issue such a harsh decree? And Antioch then explained the matter to Daniel. At this, Daniel went into the king and asked for time so that he may interpret the dream for him. Then Daniel returned to, the, to his house and explained the matter to his friends. Hananiah, Mishael, and as I'm sorry, I didn't, I'm really bad at it, the pronunciation, so I, I can't even pronounce that word. So I, I'm sorry. He urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery, so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. The difference between how each person in this story, the stress was throughout the scripture. The king had stress. The wise men that he, come, that he called across had stress. And then Daniel had stress. They all handled it different ways. So the king put his faith in man. He put his faith in the wise men to say, give me my answers. I need this and you have to do it. The wise men or the sorcerers put their faith in false gods. And also, they put their faith in kind of themselves because they was like, 
oh, I can do this, because they've done it so many times that they always just interpret it. They never really name the dream. So they was falling back on lies. But what Daniel did that was different in good, what Daniel did that was different is that he put his faith in God, and God answered. Sorry, everybody knows. I just, I really, the thing that I really want to stress is that stress wrecks our lives. Physically, it wrecks our lives. It will turn our day upside down. And if we just keep following up, it will wreck us mentally and physically. We will harsh out on the relationships that we we have so close to our hearts. And I guess um, really I just want to go back to the last final point, which is right here. How are you going to respond the next time you lose sleep because of anxiety or about your future? If y'all take anything home tonight, I just want y'all to know to handle all y'all stress through God. If it's for prayer, worship, accountability partners, anything to relieve your stress is to trust God and to trust His Word. Y'all pray with me. Dear God, thank you so much for this night. I hope that your words touch somebody in this room. I hope your wisdom helped lead somebody to you, God. Thank you so much, Heavenly Father.